Hello everyone and welcome to another My Team episode. Today we're here for round number two. Imola, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. If you haven't seen round one, which didn't get the best response because it went out on the same day as the Monaco Grand Prix and the Indy 500, then go check it out. Round number one in China. Link up in the top right. But yeah, here we are then. Imola, a track which I love and we had a really good race here last season. And hopefully you guys enjoy the episode, leave a like and subscribe for more as we're back of course with the traditional format, qualifying and race all in one episode. But yeah, in the background you saw me take care of some activities. You can see this weekend the forecast for qualifying is very, very wet. So we're going to have quite a bit of rain to deal with. It does get dry towards the very end, but we'll see you know, if we even make it that far as we jump into the action here at Q1. So. Let's see, race one, you guys know, of course, China didn't go according to plan in qualifying at least. We finished, of course, P16 after a mistake. And the race itself, though, was a great recovery to P3. However, Verstappen did win the first race. So we're already, you know, recovering points versus Max in this championship season. So in the background, you can see me go through my setup, making a few adjustments, making sure I find something that I'm happy with. And we're going to see if we can have a decent session here in the rain in qualifying. So let's get into it as we join the action on the full wets. Now, I hit the track with about 12 minutes to go. And I asked on the radio if it was ready for, you know, inters or not. And Jeff basically said to me that wets and inters are about as good as each other at this point. And you can see here I made a mistake in the Aquamina Riley chicane. And my tires were overheating. I made another big mistake the very next lap at, you can see here, the left-hander of Ravazza and it was kind of the sign that it's time for the intermediates because the wets were getting too hot. So we finished lap 24-0, last at the moment of all the runners, not really ideal, but we put the inters on and straight away the pace was there. Making our way through Ravazza 2 onto the pit straight, purple in sector 1. And we're looking to go for maybe even a low mid 19, 19 4. We go P1 faster than Verstappen, who has set a lap on intermediates, by the way. So that is a much more respectable lap time. But the track is constantly improving and evolving. You can see now Tickton P3, Latifi P2, Lungard up into P5. So we need to improve. You never know, we could always get knocked out. We're not really safe, safe. Unfortunately, though, we are stuck behind Callum Eilot at this point of the lap and I can't really commit like I normally would do through the final two corners so we just have to wait luckily we still have two tenths of a margin advantage and we cross the line and improve and we should comfortably get into Q2 and uh, we go fastest of everyone so good to see we avoid any surprises Aitken in the top eight the man you can't see though is Max Verstappen who finished down in P15 he just made it through I believe he went for his intermediate run quite early and I think was the first car to do so. Therefore, he didn't really get the best track conditions at the end. So, yeah, with that said, we jump into Q2 intermediates at this point in time. Uh, currently at the end of my first push lap. Across the line, we set a 19.8, which is four tenths slower than what we've done in Q1. So, we know there's more time to find. And we're going to go for a second consecutive push lap here. Into the Tamburello chicane. Fifth up to sixth trying to keep it nice and steady on exit and we do a great job of finding loads of time through there which is where i made a mistake on my previous lap through the real nerve chicane only got two laps of fuel left purple in sector one nicely done as we head into the toaster hairpin though a little bit wide didn't get the apex and uh, lost a bit of time on exit as well lost about a tenth and a half still though six tenths of an advantage in our favor currently p6 as we find a bit more time through the downhill left hander of Piratella into Aquaminerale now. Try to make sure we don't overcommit or make any mistakes. And we find even more lap time. And we're nearly a full second up as we set a personal best in sector two. Over the chicane. Sector three is our strongest one. Nicely done there over the curbs. A little bit safe, but it will do. And now the final two corners remain. Ravatsa one, Ravatsa two. Spot the braking. Rolex board on the right. Fourth gear. Inside curb, use the outside to reopen up the corner and then now up to the line. We lost a little bit of time through there, but still an 8 tenth improvement. And we move to the top of the time sheets with a 19 0 and our best lap of qualifying so far. After that, the track started to dry. I could already tell at this point uh, the rain was stopping, and we still had eight minutes to go. So I'm starting to think 
we could see dry tires at the very end of Q2. You can see the icon on screen on the right, um, 50 minutes time, it's gonna be dry. And that was slightly inaccurate in terms of timing because I simulated some time. So basically it should be dry for the very end of Q2. Um, however, you can see here, everyone went back out on the inter. So that kind of gave me a free pass to not go back out because I know that AI are not going to improve because the track is drying. And I dare I say that, you know, the, the, the prime time, the peak conditions had already gone by. So yeah, we stayed in the garage, uh, didn't go back out. And you can see we comfortably get into Q3. Verstappen fastest, but still a decent session overall. Aitken, unfortunately, out in P12, which is a bit disappointing. I was hoping for a bit more from Jack, but still, there is your final running order. And we are into Q3. Speaking of which, Q3 will be in dry conditions. So let's see how that works out as we hit the track for the first time. Still a bit of rain about, a couple of droplets on the camera lens and you know, the track isn't fully there. Unfortunately, you can see my reaction there. Our first lap doesn't go according to plan as we invalidate over the Radiante Alta chicane. I, after that, decided to quickly check my fuel and my tire temps and I saw that I had enough fuel for another lap. So I'm actually gonna just coast it through literally the final part of this lap here to get my tire temps down to about 85, if possible, 98, oh, sorry, 90 degrees, 88 degrees in that kind of region. Uh, we're going to go for a second push lap, especially because the track conditions, of course, would have improved again. So here we go across the start finish and we're going to try it once again. We're going to have a delta reference up until that chicane. So we'll know what to aim for as we head into the Tamburello chicane. Nice and aggressive over the curbs, flat out through the left. And we just lose the car, hit the wall. Luckily, it's not a DNF, but we do get front and rear wing damage. Luckily, we got the repairs done in time and we rejoined the action with about 30 seconds to go and we're going to get a one lap at this. So, let's see what happens. I'll let you guys enjoy the engine sound and hopefully we can find something and pull something out the bag. And there we go then, lap done. And to be fair, it was a decent lap. We did lose DRS, so we didn't get any DRS across the line, which wouldn't have you know, accounted for much of a time gain. However, it was a slight distraction heading into the Villeneuve chicane. Um, I thought I'd give myself floor damage or something. When the MFD pops up after running over a curb, I, I thought I got floor damage. And just a slight distraction was a bit of hesitation. I didn't really commit into that chicane. I do believe I could have gone about a full 10th quicker, um, probably got P4, that's kind of what I would have realistically aimed for. However, it's P9, Verstappen's on pole, so it's not really ideal, and we've got work to do in the race. So let's see what happens. Luckily, we get the free tire choice because it was a wet Q2, but still work to do in the race. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Sonoda, Nicholas Latifi and Stroll, Ocon, Bottas, Martinez and Daniel Ricciardo, Tigtum, Aitken, Charles Leclerc and Lundgaard. Russell, Giovinazzi, Robert Schwartzman, and Guan Yu Zhou, Matsushita, Eilert, Mick Schumacher, and Nikita Mazepin. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So we're here for the race then at Imola. P9 on the grid. Not exactly 
ideal what we had in mind but qualifying unfortunately didn't go quite to plan as we had a few issues in Q3 with the weather forecast so let's see what happens in the race we've got a bit of a recovery job on our hands again similar to China but not as far back as that race strategy is going to be key around here now last season I remember we did a soft to hard tire strategy and it worked out really well for us the hard tire ended up being a very strong race tire so I think I'm going to duplicate the strategy again this season in this race. However, I feel we're going to run on minimum. We've got no rain forecast, bit of overcast at the start, at the end, but no rain at any point. Other than that, I want to start on soft because I want to try and be aggressive in the first lap, try to get some places back and then see how we get on. So let's get into it. It should be fun. Leave a like if you want to enjoy it and let's get into the action. Right, here we go. Let's get into it. We'll start we'll take that gonna get the jump on Bottas didn't quite get enough speed though to get past uh oh Ricardo my god what a lunge that was from Daniel Ricardo dive bomb of sorts we're gonna try to get through an knock on here oh my god this is so so risky that they are so aggressive through here this is one of their worst tracks in terms of on track behavior they're pretty dirty Gonna try and fight back on Ricardo here, around the outside, but not way through. Little flag further back, one of the Alpines facing the wrong way. Portion, the virtual safety car has just been deployed due to a buildup of debris on the track. Right, virtual safety car. We're not gonna pit. We've done that mistake a couple of seasons ago, and that backfired massively. But Ricardo, what a start! My God, the aggression into the first chicane. We'll try and get him back as soon as possible, but for now. We're chilling in P8, which is still, uh, you know, a gain of one place. We'll see how the restart goes. The timing of this could be key if it happens out the front of the corner. Let's see when this virtual safety car ends. Will anyone else pit as well? It's a Mercedes out front. VSE ending. We're going green. Maintain positive delta until the green flags. So Lando Norris out front. Oh, what a restart. Cars in the pits as well. So we're going to move up to P7. And we're going to get the run on Ricardo here. Looks like we're lacking a bit of straight line speed though against the red ball. I've got my ERS on, but it's doing absolutely nothing. Got some battling ahead as well. Gotta be careful with these AI cars, man. They're so risky and aggressive and dangerous. I'm just gonna take a step back here. Do not want to get too involved if I can avoid it. Shroll Ricardo side by side as we go through Tosa. I just have to be patient for now. I can't really afford to rush into anything. I don't trust AI one bit. Ricardo slow off there, but we're not going to commit or let these two go for it. And look at that, Ricardo completely now stroll around the outside of Aquaminerale. Fair play. What a crazy start to this race, man. Let's see if we can get stuck in as well here. A little bit out of shape through the chicane, which not ideal. That's one of my stronger corners. Let's try and settle into a race pace. But hopefully behind Ricardo, if I can pass Stroll, let's see. It does seem like we are lacking a bit of straight line speed though. Latifi pits, wing damage. Look at the McLaren. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Look at Stroll in the McLaren. Look at the straight line speed. My God, he was racing after Ricardo was locked up and run deep. I just had to get on the brakes there to be safe. My God, this is such an intense race. I need to clear this traffic. Luckily, we're still alive though in P6. Right, DRS enabled. Things could get pretty spicy here. Stroll, going back after Ricardo. You can see there the straight line speed. Um, Stroll, that gets it done ahead of Ricardo. Just noticed, by the way, in the mini map, Verstappen was one of the cars to hit for damage. So he's actually behind us. He's going through the final corner right now. So Max out of sync and in trouble this race, which is great for us already, considering we started P9. So if we can win this, that would be a great boost for us. And there is confirmation as he sets a new fastest lap. Max down the order in this race. Stroll's running away here. Ricardo not quite able to match the pace. We go purple in sector three. I'm going to just hold off for now. These two might continue to battle. I do feel like I've got a bit more pace, but not a lot more. You know, the reality is we are lacking a bit of pace this weekend and in the dry anyway. Oh, nicely done on the brakes through there. 
We're closing in on Pierre Gasly in P3. He's struggling for pace. Let's see if we can get Ricardo here. A new strategy is available on the MFD. This time we've got the overspeed with the DRS. Can we get close enough though? There we go. Lovely. Nice clean move. Up next, Lance Stroll. Let's hope he doesn't get DRS off Pierre. Right, let's see what happens here. We're pretty close to Lance. Could fancy a move, but she might fancy a move on Pierre. We're also closing in on P2, which I think is Nicolas Latifi in the Alpha Tari having a very solid race, I must say. The McLaren looks very fast on the straight. Let's see. Stroll going after Gasly. He's going to chase him down. Gasly moves right across at the last second. Stroll's going to still try to go through. We're going to just take a step back here as they have contact. My God, this is so scary. I do not trust the AI one bit around here. But Stroll does go through. Fair play. Let's try and get past both these guys. We might try and go for the double pass. If I can nail it. Okay, decent exit. We're going to be pretty close to P. I could have maybe gone for it there, to be fair. Right the way for the straight. See if I can get a double overtake. I don't think we're close enough to stroll, though. Seems like Lance has got some very good pace. All right, here we go, then. Let's see if we can make it happen. Double slipstream. Double DRS effect. Can we get Pierre? Uh-oh, we might get boxed in here. Yep. Gasly goes for it on stroll instead. My God. Ricardo joining the party here as we have a look up the inside of Lance. Oh my god, Lance moving right across me there. Okay, now it could happen. This might actually work out. We're pretty close to Lance here. Up the inside we go. I know I'm good on the brakes through there, so I was waiting to not let Lance go defensive on me. Now we can get a free pass at Gasly. Here we go. Let's get that P3. It's Sonoda in P2, by the way, which is insane. By far his best performance. NF1 so far in this crew mode. Lovely. Right, let's see what kind of pace we have. Can we break away? Crucial, crucial phase of the race. Let's try and drop Ricardo here if we can. Right, job done. We've managed to drop Pierre straight away. Pace is good, man. These tyres are actually really, really good. Now they've got some clean air. We can win this race, but Lando is quite a way away. It's going to take some work to cut the gap down. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the hards. Yep. That could be the ace up our sleeve, the hard tire. Although, to be fair, I might go medium looking at the tire temps. Lando pits, so does Yuki Sonoda. And I'm expecting Stroll and Ricardo to follow. No, Ricardo stays out. But, Lando goes for the hard tire. Hmm. Maybe I got my prediction wrong. Maybe last year I went for the medium rather than the hard. I think we're going to go for the medium. Jack is in the pits. Jack in the pits. I feel like I can stretch this stint. My pace is still pretty decent. The tyres still feel pretty decent. Let's try and go long and see how this works out. Ricardo pits as we lap Mick Schumacher. We're going to pit this lap and go for the medium and cover off Ricardo. Okay, let's box and get the medium tyres on. I'm losing time now to the guys in the hards, so I don't want to bleed any more time if I can avoid it. Here we go. Really good pit entry. To be fair, we have gained a bit over Sonoda, so this I won't say it's going to be close, but let's see. Ricardo's jump Lance Stroll, worth noting, although they are currently in a battle. This could be close. This has to be a quick stop. Exit. And it's Exit excellent. Now. It's 2.1. It's a great stop. That might just help us be second, if not right behind Sonoda. It's going to be close. Only one stop to go. One stop left in this strategy. And we're ahead. There we go. The overcut has worked. We've got ourselves ahead of Sonoda and on mediums. Lovely. Right. So, as we approach half race distance, we have six seconds to make up to Lando if we want to win this race. Let's see what we can do. Some information on Norris. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. And there we go, Christmas has come early. Slam dunk. Norris with car issues. That's going to help us out massively. 
Here we go then, this won't take long. Lando struggling for pace quite badly. Whatever issues he has, they're costing quite a bit of pace. However, I think he might still hold on to a podium, depends how long the issues go on for. But here we go, let's try and line up for a move. We'll probably try and get him into Ravatsa. Let's see when exactly we get the run on him. But we're going to gain quite a bit through here. There we go. Just got to try and nail the chicane now. And we might even get the overtake into Ravatsa, like I said. There we go, nicely done. Might just try and wait to get DRS in the main straight, to be fair. Just wait for now. Get the RS in the pitch straight. Much easier. No need to risk anything. And there we go. Let's get this one done. The RS open. Lando doesn't have an answer. Strategy is available on the MFD. Copy. No more pit stops for us, Jeff. P1. Recovery drive complete. It helps that the AI have kind of taken themselves out of the equation with, you know, damage and battling and stuff. So let's just try and manage this race now for the next 12 laps or so. Fastest lap, didn't really expect that to be fair. We've just edged it. I don't think we'll hold on though. I don't think we have enough pace to secure that today. Yellow flag. We've lost one of the Alpines by the look of it. Let's have our knock on. Will that trigger a safety car? No, it won't. Thankfully, that would have completely turned the race on its head. Looks like we're going to keep going though. Oh, we've got another yellow this time. It's one of the McLarens, Lance Stroll, out of the race. Or not, he's got going again. Never mind, must have been a spin. So he's facing the right direction again. Oh no, he's out, he's out. Okay, confirmation then. Will that trigger a safety car? Second time of asking. Yet to see the safety car this season. And it looks like we're still going to be yet to see it. As it doesn't come out. Track limit warning. Let's try and keep it clean. Don't really want to get a penalty but I can avoid it. Giovinazzi fast up, takes ours away. Wasn't expecting to hang on to it anyway, so let's just bring the car home. Five to go. There's been an incident on track resulting in loose debris. Fortunately, the marshals have managed to clear it up in time and there are no plans for a safety car right now. Had a bit of a moment there as Schwarzman retires. Down to 19 runners, lap and a half to go. No more drama for us now, hopefully we just bring this one for the win. Here we go then, job done for us. Great recovery drive and like I mentioned before, it helps that some of that AI took themselves out of the way, including Verstappen with damage and that's made the win a lot easier for us here today. What a recovery and what a turnaround after China, that is a big win. Yes, you've done it, well done. It's a performance that our Emilia Romagna Grand Prix winners can be justifiably proud of. And I'm sure there'll be celebrations tonight. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Well, there we go then. Job done and a massive, a massive race win. A big, big 25 points. Verstappen did recover to P6 in the end, so he will get eight points and reduce the damage. A bit disappointing, Jack Aitken down in P12. I'm not going to lie. I feel like the only person you can have as a teammate in my team is probably Max Verstappen. Even then, I know you guys wanted me to have him as a teammate this year, but I was a bit concerned of maybe his performance dropping off 
like every other teammate that I've had pretty much so I didn't want to take that risk and I wanted to keep you know a bit of intrigue there with having another driver being strong in another team and having a constructor start with the fight for having said that at the same time had I got Max as a teammate maybe it would have been really really level and I could have actually raised the difficulty and had all the other teams maybe bring a bit more pace to the table but you live and learn you never know Aiken might turn it around and who knows what would have happened had Max been my teammate. Either way, there is your final top 10 with Ricardo down at P9 in the end. So he didn't quite get a big haul of points. After that race though, and after two races in the championship, we're top. We take the lead, four points clear of Lando, seven clear of Max. Ticked him up into P4. In the constructors, we're up to second. Five points behind Mercedes and equal on points with Red Bull. So the deficit has been cut down. We're back in the mix and it's game on in both championships. So guys, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes. Subscribe for more daily F1 content. We're on the run to 100k, so any help would be massively appreciated. As always, shout out to the members for supporting the content. And finally, check out the two videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. But that is it from me here today. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Until then, take care. And this is about from me.